What is going on everybody? So today I wanted to make a video addressing green hair algae in saltwater aquariums, especially when it comes to very immature systems, systems that have just been set up and kind of talk about how to avoid it. And if you do have it, ways of kind of lessening it and, and, and winning the battle against green hair algae. So today we will be going to two different tanks. Both of them have something very similar in common. They both are recently set up, and when I say, and when I mean recently, I'd say about in the past four months or so. And they have other similarities as well, which I'll go over while we're there at the job. So I'm gonna pack up the van right now. Let's head to the first tank, give you guys a quick tour, uh, and go over exactly how this became such a problem. All right, so here we are at the first customer's house, and I wanna say this tank's been up for about three and a half, four months uh, now and it's still relatively new. We just got over the brown algae phase and now we're starting to get into the green hair algae stage. And it's not out of control yet, but you know, it's definitely starting to be there. Now we started this tank with dry rock. We did not start it with live rock. Um, I'm a big proponent of using dry rock because I like to know what's going in the aquarium. I don't want any surprises later on. I don't want any nuisances, uh, uh, any type of bad hitchhikers that could end up ruining the tank down the road. But because we use dry rock, we don't have the right microorganisms in the aquarium right now and there's a lot of free real estate in that rock so that beneficial bacteria hasn't cured that isn't in that rock and it hasn't cured yet the rock hasn't cured so it leaves room for nuisance algaes like you know your diatoms dinoflagellates green hair algaes to kind of take over it's very important when you're starting an aquarium to keep your lights off when you're using dry rock for as long as you possibly can i like going about two months if you can go even longer than that i'm a big fan of that um Unfortunately, uh, the customer wanted to have the lights on a little bit sooner, and we've been dealing with this uh, hair algae issue. But like I said, we, we, we knew it was coming. We're here once a week, and we're gonna go ahead and nip this in the butt before it gets completely out of control. Uh, it's very important right now at this stage to kind of keep on top of it and do your regular water changes, get in there and manually remove as much as you can. And eventually, once the, the, the chemistry, the water chemistry gets right and the right microorganisms start to seed into the tank and start to work into the, into the rock work, you'll be fine. You can see we, right there we have an urchin in here. We have a couple of snails, but I love putting the urchins in here because I think the urchins do a really good job on hair algae. Um, all in all, this tank is really, really healthy. The coral that are in here are doing pretty well. Um, but you, you can see we're definitely dealing with a bit of hair algae. The flow in this tank is, is kick-ass. You got two gyres on the side, so there's plenty of flow, but uh, you can see that hammer coral is being engulfed by uh, some hair algae right there. But that's okay. Like I said, we're going to get in here. We're going to manually remove as much of this as we can. And as this tank grows, as this tank starts to mature, eventually that and gets healthy, eventually that hair algae will go away. We just got to stay up on our, our regular water changes. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to do a really nice service and get as much hair algae out as I possibly can today on this service. So here I am just wanted to show you guys how easy the hair algae pulls off. So this isn't a very, uh, you know, resilient hair algae. It's almost dying. There's not a lot of phosphate in the tank. It's barely holding on. It's only there because there's nothing else to com that is going to compete with it. So I know we can win this battle. So I'm just gonna go in here and just take this little grout brush and just gently scrub the rocks and get rid of as much hair algae as I possibly can. And as you can kind of tell here, it's coming off pretty easy. Like it's, 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 not, it's not hard at all uh, coming off. It's l basically melting off the aquarium. Now I'd be a bit worried if it was on there a little bit uh, stronger, if it was really seated in there, then I know we definitely have a, an issue. But I, I, again, when you have a brand new tank, when you use dry rock, green hair algae is to be expected it's part of what they call the ugly phase you deal with your browns and then your greens next right that's just kind of the process of it all so we're going to go in here and we're going to try to scrub as much of this algae away from the corals as possible let them have a little bit of space let them breathe and as we uh, scrub these rocks it will also allow that free real estate that we're that we're freeing up to be inhabited by beneficial bacterias Right, and it also allows the urchin to really get a uh, stay on top of the hair algae and just basically battling it the best we can. I'm also going to be adding some phosphate remover to starve that green hair algae, and I'm going to do a pretty good, significant water change too to stay up on it. Like I said, this is to be expected with a new tank. I knew the hair algae was coming. 
I'm just going to continue to brush off the rocks, continue to do our weekly water changes of about, uh, I say, you know, anywhere from 40 to 50 percent. Just stay on top of your aquarium. If you're dealing with a new aquarium and you're dealing with hair algae issues, just do your regular tank husbandry. husbandry. Do not overfeed, you know, maybe dim your lights back a little bit, shorten the, the time that you have them on, and eventually you will beat it. Do not worry. It's part of the process. I'm telling you, you're going to be fine. Now, moving on to the next customer's aquarium. This is another job, a Red Sea. Now, this hair algae is a bit more of a problem. Um, again, it's, it's getting a bit out of control here. And this, the way this rock is, it's really hard to get in there and brush it all off. And it's been here for a bit, and uh, it's, it's, I think we're going to have to do a little bit more than just brushing and, and doing water changes. Although we're going to continue to do that, we're going to brush off as much as possible, do a good water changes weekly. Um, I, at some point, you want to try different things. And this t tank, to me, is a good candidate for something like a fluconazole treatment, which is basically um, a medication that you can put into the aquarium that will basically melt all the green hair algae out of your tank. This tank right here is about six months old. Um, there's a decent amount of coral in here, so we don't want the hair algae to become too out of control. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a fluconazole treatment in here. Just melt that hair algae out of here, come back in uh, a week or two and do a significant water change to get everything that, that that dead hair algae released into the water and get it out so we can start brand new. So here's what I'm talking about, the fluconazole treatment. It's um, reflux. Uh, you can find this at most of your LFS. It works great. It comes in pill form. You pop open the pills. Um, there's a recommended dosage on the side of it. If you're having really bad issues with hair algae, I highly recommend this stuff. It works wonders. The directions are out there. Um, I can make a video about this and how to use it in the future if you want, but uh, I highly recommend this stuff if you have a really bad case of hair algae. In closing, I just want to say for anybody that's just starting the tank, it's so critical, it's so important to be able to keep your lights off for as long as possible, especially when dealing with dry rock for the simple fact that we really need that tank to mature, we really need those rocks to cure and let all that beneficial bacteria settle in that rock and claim that real estate so that the hair algae can't get it and the brown algae can't get it. If you're dealing with hair algae issues right now, the best advice I can give you is uh, more deliberate feeding, get off the pellets, get off the flake food, maybe uh, switch to some frozen food, switch to frozen food, and just continuously do your water change, I would say weekly. I know it's labor intensive and we don't want to do water changes a lot of times, but it's a really good way to get in there, siphon out as much hair algae as possible, and I promise you, if you do uh, a month, two months of water change consistently, you're gonna notice a drastic difference. And even with the medications and, and with using GFO and phosphate remover, that algae is going to die in your tank and it's releasing more phosphate. So we need to do water changes to get that phosphate out of the aquarium. We need to get um, do water changes to get all the dead organic material out of the aquarium. Um, and I promise you, you'll notice a difference. The key though is definitely do water changes when you're dealing with hair algae. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a good one.